Hey guys, welcome back to Pixel Rich Games. In this episode of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, we're gonna look at the abilities of the champion or champions who I think is or are one of the strongest if not the strongest in the game. Our flower dwelling opera singers, the Great Fairies. Let's head over to the Great Fairies information panel to get this started. We have two types of attack in Age of Calamity, Y for regular attacks and X for strong attacks. The arrows we see here indicate the different attacks that we can chain as combos. Right below this, we see our unique action that's triggered by ZR. This says we can unleash an attack from each fairy. Let's skip the next line and have a look at the one after it. This says that each of them has her own unique action. Let me just go ahead and translate that in English. This simply means that each fairy has her own unique attack with a specific effect. Before we dive into more details about this unique action, I just want to make sure that we're all familiar with these four beauties to avoid confusion. Let's go alphabetically and quickly identify each one of the fairies. The easiest way I can think of is by the color of their hair. First one's Kotera. She's the one with nice blonde hair. In Breath of the Wild, she's most likely the first great fairy players encounter because she's located near Kakariko Village. Her unique action spawns blue nightshade flowers in front of her twice. The second one is what makes this fairy on her own be the strongest in the game. The second bloom actually applies a debuff that lowers enemies defensive stats. This also stacks so spamming this before a weak point attack can insta kill bosses. Demo later. The second fairy is Kaisa. She has pink hair and she's located southeast of Tabantha Tower in Breath of the Wild. Her unique action spawns mighty thistles behind her and then fires them forward. This attack has very good range and damage and can be used effectively in destroying weak point meters. Third one's Miha. She has purple hair and can be found northeast of Zora Domain in Breath of the Wild. In my opinion, she's the best looking among the four, just because we have the same wavy banks. Even if mine's not purple, her unique action spawns armorants around her and creates a shield that can absorb up to two hits once enhanced. This shield doesn't have a countdown timer on it, so it doesn't expire. It won't go away till hit enough times. Last one's named Terra. She's as pale as a ghost and her hair's almost white with a henna green. She's my go-to fairy in Breath of the Wild because she's the easiest to reach from a shrine. She's located in Gerudo, almost at the southwest corner of the map. Her unique ability blooms different types of Safina flowers around her to deal damage. This covers the biggest area among all unique actions. Now that we've covered the fairy's unique actions, we can now proceed with their 7 consecutive regular attacks. Take note that the fairies do a switch after the 2nd and the 6th Ys. Their X or strong attack makes them dash forward a bit and hit enemies with their big lady shoulder. One Y straight to an X fires 3 purple Hadoukens forward. This is really good for clearing out mobs of monsters. YYX does a tag team hard projectile attack. After the animation, the second fairy takes over, unless we dodge cancel to keep the existing one. YYYX makes a fairy blow glitters that we can aim left or right. This is actually the first armor upgrade animation in Breath of the Wild, in case you didn't notice. 4 Ys to an X is another tag team attack that first spreads fairy dust, then sucks in everything near into the flower pulp. The downside to this attack is it forcibly changes the fairy in play. Like most champions in the game, 5 Ys to an X and 6 Ys to an X share the same combo finisher. 
This makes our fairy hide inside our vault, and we can follow up with Weiss up to six times, and this'll make great fairies gloriously pop out with each Y. Press it next instead of a Y, we'll end the follow up option. Two things to note about this combo. First, we can still move around even inside the vault. Second, our glorious pop out can actually expose weak point meters, but it doesn't work for Hinox and Talus. Now it's time to have a look at the moves that aren't shown on the great information panel. Like all characters, we have the ability to wall jump. There isn't a button in this game to make a character jump. What we need to do is dash towards a structure by pressing B, then the option to wall jump will pop up, telling us to press B again if we want to jump. Once airborne, whether from a wall jump or an attack that launched us, we have a good number of options of what we can do next. Our first option is to simply fly away like a gigantic Tinkerbell, which I use to either avoid fights when I'm in a hurry or to reposition myself in a boss fight. Next, we can do up to three regular attacks. The third looks similar to the strong attack on the ground and makes us land back well to the ground. We can also follow up wise, except the third, with an X or simply go straight to it. This makes Tinker Giant hide in their bulb and drop straight to the ground. While zooming around in a bulb, we gain access to new attacks. This first one is our dashing regular attack. It looks very similar to our glorious pop out. One important thing to note about going into a bulb is this forces a switch to another fairy. Our dashing strong attack is a slap from inside the bulb to inflict maximum disrespect to enemies. This doesn't end our zoom zoom mode so we can spam that slap as much as we want. Because Miha can make a shield for Team Flower Power, we lose the ability to do perfect guards. If you don't know what perfect guard is, check out my guide to one-handed weapon link. Links in the description. Even if we don't have perfect guard, we still have access to Flurry Rush. This can be triggered by dodging with B right as the boss is about to hit us. Once it triggers, we just mash Y to destroy their V point leader. Now that we're done with the unwritten stuff, we now proceed to look at our fairy's rune abilities. We can activate a rune by holding R and then pressing X, Y, A, or B. R plus X activates stasis that can freeze enemies in front of these orchestra singers. We can charge a dash attack with X or simply dash cancel out of it. R plus Y activates remote bomb. This makes our fairy hide again in their bulb and mashing Y shoots out remote bombs like cannonballs. What I don't like about this rune is this is another move that forces us to switch fairies. Our plus A is for Cryonis. This one creates a great pillar underneath our even greater fairies that shoots us up. Be careful using this in tight areas as we can actually trap our huge, sexy bodies with it. Our last rune is Magnesis that can be activated with R plus B. This sucks in metallic objects around us into the bulb and spins them forward afterwards. This is the only bulb entering animation that we have that doesn't forcibly replace the fairy in play. We're finally at the part where I share my build recommendation for the great fairies. First off, our best weapon, Extravagant Bangles. Its first hidden seal is a strong attack damage plus plus. The second hidden seal is increased damage to lock on target. For my seal recommendation for these fairies, there is only one. And that's to go full attack speed. Just slapping your best attack speed seals and you're set. Almost forgot the highest base damage that I have so far for our weapon as of making this video is 70. The reason behind going ham on attack speed and ignoring everything else is to help us apply Koterra buffs faster. 
Everything else doesn't matter. Anyone can break this game with Kotera. When playing this champion with the goal of breaking the game, there are only three things on our to-do list. Fairies pop out randomly, so our first goal is to get Kotera out. If the four fairies had a queen, it's Kotera! Everyone's nice and pretty, but Kotera's the bomb! This is the reason why I don't like moves that forcibly changes the fairy in action, and that's why I'm careful not to get into zoom zoom mode when I have Kotera in play. Take note of the moves that result in switches. ZR also switches fairies, but this one, we can dodge cancel to keep Kotera. Another golden tip is we can hold B and then do a left or right with our left joystick to quickly look for Kotera. Once we have her, our goal is to spam ZR and stack debuffs on the enemy boss. The third step is to simply hit the boss with whichever attack you want. Before we go there, I want to bring us to my favorite part of the video first. Our Flower Puff Girls have two common weak point attack animations. Here's the first. And here's the second. They do have other weak point attack animations depending on the enemy they're fighting. Like my other guides, I'm not gonna include those here to avoid spoiling them for you. Next is their special attack. So once we fully charge our stamina bar by killing monsters, we're able to perform a special attack by pressing A. Not only does the special attack deal a ton of damage, we can also use this to avoid the damage from big attacks that we are about to receive when caught off guard. When a boss is about to hit us, we can simply press A, and once the animation starts, the attack that was about to hit us will be cancelled. Here's an excerpt from a run in a natural disaster where I did my best to demonstrate how crazy strong Kotera is. Click here to watch my full guide to the better bird in my opinion, the Rivali Pan Bird. Temo. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified for more Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity content. Stay tuned for my next vid, stay healthy, keep safe, and God bless us all.